Hi everybody and welcome back. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Today I'm going to take you through a quick and easy tutorial on Bad Blood by Taylor Swift on the violin. If you want to know where to get the free sheet music that I've done for you all in a PDF, I'll put a link directly underneath this video where you can download and print that out completely for free. Um, I've also done a simple piano tutorial on this as well, so I'll link that in the description bar underneath also. So if you want to know how to play Bad Blood on the Violin by Taylor Swift, then please keep watching. Okay, as usual, I'm just going to take you through what I've done with this. So over every single note, you'll find you'll have the fingerings as to where to put your finger. So the first one starts with two. If you've got repeated notes, I haven't bothered putting twos above those because that's obviously fairly obvious. The next one is a three, the next one's a four, an open, a three, and so on. The other thing that I've done as well is put down the exact string you're going to be on. So for example, we're on the E string and we've got second finger on E, second finger on E, second finger on E, second finger on E, third finger on E, fourth finger on E, open E, then we're moving to a third finger on the A, a one on the A, back to a second finger on E, so on and so forth. It's very, very simple. So you're going to stay on that particular string until it tells you to change otherwise. You'll find that um, the structure of the piece is exactly the same and is also in the same key as the original. So if you want to play along to the track that Taylor Swift sings on, or you've got yourself a backing track of some sort, you'll be able to play through there start to finish and it will work perfectly. There is a repeat near the start where you repeat the verse, um, but that's just fairly obvious as well. So the like I said, the structure is exactly the same. So I guess the only other thing that I need to mention as well is that when you've got your dots on your violin, if you have them, you've got your first finger would go here, your third finger would go there. Now, if you've got a second finger on the E string, like you do at the very start, your second finger on the E is going to be jammed in right next door to the first finger. Not a little bit up, not close to the third, but jammed in right next door to the first finger. That's very, very important. When you have a second finger on the A string, that's going to be in exactly the same place as well. So not in the middle, not here, right next door to the first finger. Again, very important for intonation. When you have second fingers on the D string, this is where it changes a little bit, it's gonna be right next door to the third finger. So if your third finger goes here, it's gonna be right next door to your third finger, which is gonna be here. So on the E and on the A string, it's gonna be next door to the first finger, and on the D string, it's gonna be next door to the third finger. So if your second finger is not quite close enough to your, your first finger, it's gonna be like this. That does not sound very nice at all. So what I'm gonna do is put my first finger on the dot, I'm gonna clamp, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna crush in my second finger. And so on and so forth. So again, when you get to the verse, which is on the fourth line down, Again, that second finger needs to be stretched because we're on the D string. If it's not stretched enough, you'll get this. Something's just quite off about it, isn't there? So, so make sure it is really, really close to where that third finger would go. Um, other than that, that's that's kind of it really. Again, this is quite a nice, simple one. It's in a nice key. Uh, again, if you know this song, this is quite, quite easy to play and it's very, very repetitive as well. The chorus just repeats again and again and again and the verse is also quite repetitive as well. So I don't think there's anything else that I need to mention in there. I don't think there's anything else that's complicated apart from just remembering that on the E string and the A string, your second fingers are back or close to the first finger. And when you're on the D string, your second finger is stretched close to the third finger. You don't have to use a G string in any of this. So we don't have to worry about what's going on on the G string. So there we go. Just a nice, quick, simple, easy tutorial again on this. Um, don't forget to check out the other videos underneath. And there's also a playlist underneath this um, underneath it in the description bar underneath this video as well of lots of other videos I've done in a similar style to this so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video